Welcome to the Undressing Room Podcast, y'all, presented by Macy's. We have a whole lot going on this <laughs> week. The queen is sliding through. That's right. Special guest queen, Nyjah, is coming by to talk about her newest single in her upcoming projects. Also, you know, it goes down in my DM. Yay. We gonna look and see what kind of crap is in there this week because ain't been nothing worth I'm feeling nothing positive. Like. I'm feeling really good about today's DMs. I don't know. It's giving crickets. You know, summertime coming back around, they need to step it up. But for our final question to undress, guess what? What? This happens. Like, is your friend gonna have more kids with you? Is your friend going to be there to hold you at night? Y'all just really got to think for yourself, your legacy, and your family. All right, y'all. So, yeah, you know it's going down. So make sure you listen to hear how we undress this mess like we do each and every week on the Undress and Run podcast presented by Macy's. And speaking of Macy's, I'm super excited. One of my favorite seasons is Amongst Us. It's spring break time. Count down the days until spring break. So if you have a very important plan Mm -hmm. to basically lay out in the sun at spring break, you know, it's very, very important. Well, Macy's has your vacation necessities from bikinis to sandals to beach towels Uh to sunscreen. No matter what you're throwing into your beach bag, you can order it the way Lori loves to do it online yes. or you can pick it up in store or you can get curbside pickup or you can do <laughs> same day delivery powered by DoorDash. It's easy. It's What, what do they need to do though? How do it's they do so this? It's so simple. All I got to do is go to Macy's.com. I think y'all can remember that. That's pretty easy, right? That's it. Just head on over to Macy's. That's it. Just head on over to Macy's.com and they will have you squared away. I don't know if we can help you with the allergy medicine for the spring, but we got everything else covered. Well, what they do have is good wine. So oh. you can go to Macy's wine shop and if okay. your allergies are flaring up, sip you some good red and forget all about it. <laughs> get some red and get up in your head. Ready to hit. <laughs> exactly. Now, this woman needs absolutely no introduction. She's drop all. dead gorgeous. She's mm-hmm. killing the charts right now. Her name is absolutely everywhere. She's collaborating with one of the biggest artists of our time. The one, the only, Queen Naja. Hi, gorgeous. Hello. How are y'all doing? Thank you for joining us. This is your first time joining the Undressing Room podcast, so we're excited to have you here. Now, our podcast is sponsored by Macy's, so this Mm -hmm. is where we get undressed. We talk about everything that's out there, what you do want to talk about. If you want to leave your stuff covered up and don't want to take it off, you can do that, too. This is where you do what you want to do, okay, Queen? Yeah. Well... I have um, definitely been excited about this new link up with your fellow Detroit native, Big Sean, for your new single, Hate Our Love. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's doing so good. I'm so happy. Yes, it is. It's a dope record, dope video, dope artwork. And you even had uh, your boo come and help you out a little bit on your artwork. And uh, y'all got real sexy on the cover there. Yeah, we try to get more intimate then. Well, was it sexy to you? It was sexy. I thought it was a little sexy. We ain't have on no clothes, so I guess it was sexy. It was undressed. Whoa. Yeah. You see all these things that's happening lately, Queen, where um, a lot of people been posting up things, child, that they ain't supposed to have been posting, like uh, sending videos of themselves. Have you ever mistakenly um, may have posted like a little something to you and Clarence, or maybe you were trying to send them something and almost posted by mistake? Actually, no. I, I, I steer far away from doing that stuff. I would be devastated to happen to me. So really, yeah, I steer far away from that. So no pictures, like you, you know, maybe you might got to be on the road. I don't ever get close to the apps. Like I'm never gonna get close to like the sending. <laughs> you're not sending it. Through oh, so the you app. living real mindful. You making sure you know what you're doing. You're very conscious about how you move. You know your status. Yes. It happened to the to your featured artist on your on your album. They're saying it's rumored that Big Sean too. He got a little leak that happened. You know when things oh, like no, that. Janae. Did you hear about that, Eva? I haven't heard about that. I heard, of course, I didn't try to go see anything. <laughs> but um, but I mean, he he come he he said that that wasn't him. So he said it wasn't him. But there was uh, rumors that Big Sean mistakenly uh, sent out a picture of his man. And, you know, there's always been rumors about Big Sean, child. So I was going to ask you that. I know you're not supposed to be looking, but did anybody try to send it to you? Nobody tried to. 
No, no one tried to send it or anything. I just, you know, scrolling. I seen stuff, but you know, I out of respect. They sent it scrolling. to me, child. So. Just keep scrolling. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, so I would like you to send it to me. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm gonna look at it on my own time. <laughs> but speaking of respect, Queen Naja, I would like to say that you are definitely a class act when it comes to being an artist. A lot of these artists these days are out here just trying to do whatever they can do for a moment um, and some shine. And you really have taken your artistry to heart very seriously. I see you in your interviews, the way you deal on social media, what you talk about, what you don't talk about. So just kudos to you for being a proper representation of a lady and an artist in this business. You doing it, Ma. Thank you. I'll be trying. Because you are so dope and intentional, I would love to know what you think about some of the stories that we cover here on this show, because mm -hmm. some of this stuff is like, oh my goodness. So I don't know if you've heard, have you heard of the Tinder swindler? Um, <laughs> I think I um so I think I seen I think I seen Clarence watching it. Oh wait, so he watches shows without you? I thought like when y'all are in relate because y'all in relationships, I'm not. You're married, Eva, obviously. And I thought y'all only was allowed to watch shows together, or like it's against the law. So it is against the law in my house. Yes, it is. But that's <laughs> that's a show that I wasn't really interested in. We have certain shows that we cannot watch without each other. Like right now, we can't watch. The um genius, the Kanye um one on Netflix. We we couldn't watch yes. without uh, Euphoria without each other, <laughs> and I think I did just watch the Medea movie without him, and he was kind of mad at me. He was like, "Why would you do that?" And, he <laughs> and I was like, "You don't want to watch that. You don't want to see that." What you think about that Medea movie? Because they had some moments in there where they, I feel like you could have related to it because nobody liked the lady's baby father. And uh, <laughs> that's kind of like so both of y'all actually can relate to that. <laughs> Man, honestly, um, I, I don't know. I was folding clothes while watching it, so I didn't really think much of it. It was, <laughs> it was Medea, you know. It was a, it was it funny. was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Well, the Tinder swindler is this guy who basically has figured out how to swindle all of these women who are genuinely looking for like love and romance. Now, I'm married and uh, I got off the market before I understood what <laughs> Tinder was, but it's like one of those apps where you swipe if you like the person and whatever. So the idea is that you have some stuff in common, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this new lady got nothing on the Tinder swindler. So apparently there is this new um, scam that people are doing. So like arranged marriages in India, what they do is they get together. They say they're going to get an arranged marriage. Now the woman is smart because the woman says, hey, I'm going to run to Canada and set us up a life and set us up a little a home and everything. And mm -hmm. so I need you to come after I go for our life. Well, she just takes the money and hits it. She just goes away. Never sets up nothing, nothing, like completely scams these men $25,000 a pop to have a life with and to get married to only to take their money and move to a country. What would you do if you fell in love with somebody only to find out they were using you for status and your money? Simple. Just leave them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Just leave them. That's, that's the only thing I could do. I mean, am I, of course, it wouldn't be no Tinder swindling stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to say, too, because when you in love and you in it, it's, it's really hard to um say what you'll do. Right. I think the best thing to do would, would be to leave, because I think the worst thing is when you love someone or you're in love with somebody and it's not reciprocated either way, whether they cheat in or whether they just using you or whether... And like you really have no choice but to but to leave. So how do you do that even with friends? Because as we know, Ooh. like you are on top right now. You've been working really hard to get your singing career where it is, and you are popping. So I know mm -hmm. you outside and you running into a lot of people. Now, of course, it's gonna be people with the hey big head or or how you been, sis? I remember when we was, you know, so how do you uh kind of like weave out Who's the people that maybe you lost touch with? And who are those people that are just trying mm. to get on or be around and be down? Um, I really don't have those interactions. I, I don't encounter those things. Um, I think I dealt with that early in my, like when I first started um, YouTube. When I first started YouTube, mm. that's when that was mainly, you know, happening. So I had to, um, a lot of those people that were once my friends, maybe back in like high school or like after high school, um, once I started getting a following, period, um, 
you know, I don't know why, but they just, people started coming out on Facebook like, yeah, she, we had class together. She was this, she was that. They were either saying bad stuff or trying to say that they knew me really well and, and they didn't. And then the friends that that I was once close to, we just had kind of outgrew each other before I even got. So you know how like you outgrow students after high school, but then like you get, you get a little buzz or whatever. And then- yeah wants to come back who's there for you and this and that and i'm like we outgrew each other before like (laughs) you're lucky i'm speaking to you sis you know i had a lot of issues like that where i just i mean i had to focus on my family anyway like you know my son and stuff so that that's kind of done with now i really don't have like who i keep around is like i consider them family as you should all right, so um, there's a wife, and she was going on a plane. They were traveling together, and the husband decided to upgrade his own flight and left the wife behind in economy. Now, we know you travel with a lot of people all the time. We know and mind you, this was a 12-hour trip. You got to give her all the context trip. low. They were yes. going to Japan um 12 hours and he had the opportunity to upgrade he had some extra points he was a medallion member she wasn't so he was like you know i'm gonna just upgrade because it's free now for her it probably would have been like about another thousand dollars so he like oh you know i'm not gonna do that now we know you got the travel first class because you're queen nausea now what happens if nobody else can't get first class like clarence (laughs) do you downgrade your ticket for your man or are you know what's happening are you sitting in first class by yourself to be honest with you most of the time we do sit in first class but if there has been usually i don't travel with just like if we're going on vacation or vacation we travel like we sit together of course right um but usually i'm traveling with a group like i like my band my manager like so a lot of times we are scattered and a lot Mm -hmm. of times like i have my nanny and she's sitting with one kid and then uh, maybe I'm sitting with the other. Uh, I don't really, I don't know. I don't have an issue. But if, if they was going on vacation together. Vacation. Vacation. That's a different 12 thing. hours, girl. It really depends. It really do. Because I, I always try to find a way to think about, oh, well, what if, like, what if his legs was extra long and he was just super uncomfortable? <laughs> but other than that, if, if your legs ain't extra long, you just can't fit in a seat then you should be sitting next to me regardless. So, right. Or you got to up, upgrade mine. You know what I'm saying? Upgrade mine too. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just feel like that's a little not like what I'm going to do for the whole 12 hours. Like, <laughs> who to talk to? Right. You just went on a vacation too. And you went on a family vacation. So, <laughs> well, where'd um, you go? To Disney. That- How fun. Was it? Is there a kid's first time to Disney? Yeah, it was my first time too. I had never, ever been. So, really? Yeah. So, oh, um, cute. For my son, CJ, his seventh uh, birthday, he had a, man, he had the best birthday ever. He had a, a dinner, then a party the next day, like with a bouncy house and stuff. And then we had, then we went to Disney, like we went to the water park. So, um, it was super, super fun. Wait, y'all adopting? Because I need, mean, like, I, 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 girl, I'm like, you can come pick up. I got an girl. You can come up. pick my daughter up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I be having, I be having a, a, the little kid parties too. I'm next time I invite you. Please, I, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Bringing my nephew, we could yeah. definitely. Because <laughs> I ran into you. I remember. Um, actually, I'm going to go have lunch with him later on today. Freddie O, I believe, tried to introduce us a while ago when I first moved to Atlanta. Uh, and yeah. um, was like, this is Queen Nyjah. And I was like, okay, that's what's up. And then I got in a car, girl. I turned the radio on. I was like, oh my God, that's that girl. <laughs> I knew every word to your record. I just didn't, I didn't put the two and two together. A lot of people do that too. They don't, I don't know, they don't put a face to a name until like after, but it's cool, it's cool. We'll have another time. Absolutely. And I'm not from Atlanta, so the groupie life don't live here. No, I feel like she, <laughs> she's like, we went to <laughs> high school together. No, right. <laughs> no but so uh, speaking of your music, I just seen somebody post up. I believe it was Super Scent, And she posted up. She was in a club in Anolia and you got the booty bounce music behind your one of your records. How do you feel when people change and like the different cultures of the different cities? They uh, they got a remix to your record. Do you? Take that personal, because I know you work hard on your music, or do you like the art? I love it. Any way you play my song and you singing it, I don't care if it's to a bounce beat, a country beat, or whatever whatever you do, <laughs> like, I'm, happy. I'm just happy that somebody know it. I noticed that you had like a bucket list a while ago mm-hmm. of um, who you would want to work with. And Big Sean was on the bucket list, but... Yeah. 
you already achieved that. So we need to set a new bucket list yes. of a new artist that you're going to work with. So when you come back to the Undressing Room podcast, we can talk about that new record. So who would you like dream to love to work with? You I do want to add really quickly, though. We also got to put baby face on that bucket list because we talked to you on the morning hustle and uh, you told us about you working with baby face. So he oh, yes. he's already off the bucket list. Yes, we still got some work to do, too, though. We need my my record now. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, uh, guys. You know that's a, the, it's crazy that you asked that because I was literally just in the shower. Like when people ask me, like, "Who's your dream?" Um, pe- like, who do you want to work with? I just throw out names that people that I would like to work with. But for the most part, I want to work with anyone who we would mesh well together. Yeah. If it's not going to mesh well, you know what I'm saying? Then like, if it doesn't make sense, of course we can still be cool. But like, we don't gotta work together. So I was really rethinking my like bucket list of people I want to work with I definitely still want to work with Cardi B as like the female rapper because I just feel yes. like I would always, kill it I've always loved her from the beginning I feel like we could do something real cute but like let me see like when I think about like R&B artists that I want to work with I think of all like the new girls of course and that's that's cute and or whatever but I want to work with some OGs like I want to work with okay. um, Alicia Keys Mary J like I want to throw it back a little bit and work with like some of the OGs, the people that I've looked up to rather than trying to, you know, chase down new people because everyone's busy. Everybody have their own schedules and stuff. But if I say a dream, it'll, it'll definitely be to work with some of the OGs. I love that about you because you're not like you are talented, but you also believe in yourself so much to the point where you're like, I'm not scared to go head to head with the OG and not really head to head because it's a collab, but you know how it goes. Like I respected you so much for working with Ari Lennox because I feel like sometimes when there is uh, two women coming up together in the industry and maybe at a similar pace, uh-huh. that people pin them against each other yes. mm-hmm. and instead yes you did it's that it's very hard to work with to be honest with you guys it's been very hard for me to even land a, a female feature um because like, you're pretty and you're talented ma'am you know, i'm sorry that's a hard combo i don't know why because i feel that we all are pretty and talented yes. and we all have our own like we all have our own lane like mm-hmm. even though we yeah. all make like r&b music like we all have our own but i think it should it should just be a little bit easier to like collab. Like people be a little just hard to be a little bougie acting. Like you Mm. know, a little hard to get acting funny with the girls. And I love the girls and I love women empowerment and coming together and stuff like that. But I'm not going to chase nobody down. I know that's right. Yeah. So, you know, it'll happen organically when it, when it does with whoever. And, you know, I love that you say that. I love that because you seen the tank stuff and you would think like a artist like like you and tank who are established y'all got your stuff out there very talented wanting and willing to work with other people you would think that y'all would have the floodgates coming in you know and yeah. instead it's a little more difficult for y'all and i didn't realize that at all very difficult it's it's way easier for me to get a male feature wow i think you will be so dope at like a moulin rouge remember that um that collab that they did back in the day with like christina aguilera and the yes. Brad. they did like yeah. all the all the hot new girls that like y'all like Ari Lennox and you that can really sing, like y'all could do that over again and show the sisterhood in the synergy because it's about representation. If we put ourselves against each other, then the whole world's going to do it. But if we start to, you know, climb ladders together, then they're going to get onto that too. So it's just a matter of what we do. I took her on tour. Everybody was putting us against each other on Twitter. Like, oh, Queen should have been, or Tink should have been bit like, and then we went on tour together. So it's like all of that went down the drain. Love it. That's amazing. Love I it. love that. Well, so one thing we do on this show is we slide in my DMs and see who's sliding in my DMs. Now, yes. uh, we know people know you're spoken for, but I'm sure uh, people still try to shoot their shot up in there sometimes, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to let you read or I'm going to read to y'all a DM or two that I got going on. Y'all tell me whether or it's not It's the craziest thing, respond. Queen. It's the crazy. These people are crazy. I never crazy. <laughs> okay, but I sometimes okay. I want her to. Okay, go. So I thought this one was hilarious. Well, well, not really hilarious, but just listen. Please don't think I'm weird or a stalker, but I saw you this weekend out with friends. Mm-hmm. I noticed that somebody broke into you and you broke your, and they broke your glasses. 
I know how much you love them. It was really like really bent. They weren't broke, but they were messed up. I know how much you love them. And I know they were expensive. I would love to, to replace them for you and treat you to dinner. He said, that's a stalker. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a stalker. <laughs> it is, right? No, I'm I'm sorry. That's that's a little weird. If you if you far off somewhere and you looking at my glasses that close that the could see that they a little broken. That's yes. hella creepy. If you start <laughs> off a conversation by saying, I'm not lying, I'm not you lying. If you start <laughs> off by saying I'm not a stalker, you a stalker. Like whatever you say I'm not, you I'm are not crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I was uh, I would I would steer clear then. Yeah, that's so don't let him <laughs> replace my glasses. Why would you ask to replace my glasses out of anything? What if he had his friend come over and break that's my glasses just so he could talk to me? Oh, no. <laughs> He's beyond the soccer. He's 51 50. I think it's super weird. I'm like, bro. And then why didn't you say nothing to me right then and there? That's what my main thing is. If you notice something and you wanted to talk to somebody, why wait till you leave and then DM it's them? It's lurky. Yeah, it's everybody weird. gets creepy like, with yeah, social I media. You. I've seen you. No, that's weird. Uh-uh. That's Super so, weird. That's, it's so weird. What else we got in there? Okay, love? so I have this other guy. Now, this is why I asked you this question earlier, because it's actually happened to me. So there was a guy that I used to talk to quite some time ago, a long, long time ago, and he slid in my DM. Uh, started following me, liking every single picture. You know how people do to get attention. And then he goes, oh, so this is how your page is looking now? You really showing out. Hey, big head with the eyes. Now, the big head. Now, because you know what hey, big head mean, mean you try to swing back around the block, back around the corner. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm thinking this, block. <laughs> what do, what do y'all think? Because like I can either be nice and be like, yeah, thanks, glued up on you, get the hell out of here, you know, you trolled it. I could just do something like that, or I could just simply ignore. What you think, it. Queen? So basically, he's saying that you you wasn't all of that before. I guess he ain't think so then. And then now it's like, ooh, well, I found out you were a diamond in the rough. Is that basically what? Um, that's what I took from it. Yeah, I mean, if you can't if you can't see me at my 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 worst, then you know, ding ding. <laughs> That's not what I took. I took that L'Oreal. L'Oreal recently had um, her boobies reduced, and she's always had like really nice sized juggies, and uh -huh. she reduced her boobies, and now she wears like little booby tops like this where you don't have to wear a bra and wow. she wears them all the time and she puts them on Instagram. So yeah, I think this person is looking, oh, so this what we doing now? So, I mean, I mean, you just, you know, of course you get more, you always get more attention when your body is out or anything, or if anything is shown, any crack of anything. Is shown. <laughs> um, So people gonna pay more attention, but I mean, if you're not interested in uh, just ignore them. You gotta I like the original queen answer. And what I'm gonna say is if you can't accept me in my sweatpants, then you don't deserve me in my bikini You don't top. post up sweatpants, though. <laughs> what even, I, I got on a sweatshirt right now. Free people by you Macy's. Know. Thank you. But <laughs> I love me a nice little sweatsuit. You crazy as hell. That's that's the most comfortable. Traveling in sweatsuit. I got skims right up. Just do you get what I'm saying? I love me a little comfy, comfy outfit. He ain't got. To, I ain't got to do all that for him. Next, I think he deserves to be blocked. Don't look at my pictures no more. They too sexy for you, brother. I will honestly leave him unblocked just so he could see. He could see I left him on scene. And I'm then, gonna take this clip and post it up so he can see it. <laughs> leave him on red. Leave him. I'm on with red. that. I'm with that. We can do that. <laughs> yes. Do you have one more in there? Oh, well, this guy wants to start a business with me, but he also wants Ooh, to date talk. me. <laughs> Wait, so what? he's basically saying, so at first he's like, um, I love you. Um, please read my DM on air. So he must listen to this show. Oh, well, he said, I'm going to type to you in all caps because I pray to God you read this. You are the GOAT. I wish I could put it in bigger words, but I don't got time for that. I love you. I really do love you. I also would love to start a sneaker company with you. We can do both. <laughs> I'm a sneakerhead just like you. Let's build black love. I love you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is so funny. Like, I don't even find it to be weird. That's probably really that person's personality. They probably like really friendly and really just 
Maybe that was a little over the top. <laughs> Black love. Like, but like, you know how like you you tell your love story and like the beginning is kind of weird. Like, yeah, this is how we met. Like, <laughs> yeah. You want, to, you want to start a sneaker brand. Like, that's like funny. I would, I would play around and get a little bit. You know what a problem with, with some of these people are? Well, this one looks a what? little crazy. Well, I guess he's not that. That's bad the king looking. of shoot my shot. He put right. everything in there that he might have won. I'm not mad. Like he's, he's, he's not bad so looking fine. either. He's kind of cute, but he's young looking. He looks Ooh. really young. Oh. I would give him like twenty two. Ooh, oh no! <laughs> oh, he's still on his now what do y'all shoes. think? No ma'am. No, <laughs> no ma'am. No. So with, with your DMs, you just put it in a in a sense where you're not never gonna read them, or how does that work? Do, do you and Clarence laugh about them? Or anything like that? We actually don't talk about our DMs too much. For real? So, like, y'all don't share passwords? Because I don't know no, how I, it works. I know his passwords. He know mine. But it's just, like, we don't really, like, I don't really look through my requests like that. But if I do run across, like, someone um, flirting or, or trying to, you know. I mean, I, tell, I, I think I told him, like, maybe once or twice. But, like, you don't need to go report every single time. Like, oh, look, this person tried to talk to me. Like, you just right. don't come back. You only have to say something, Queen, if it's your man's friend. Yeah. So, like, if somebody's trying to holler and they're an entertainer, I mean, that's part for the course, right? You're a beautiful girl. They're going to shoot their shot, see what they can get back. Yeah. But if it's your man's friend and, like, y'all going to be at the game together mm. or, like, he's likely to be over there on the holiday, you're going to have to say something. Yeah, for a fact. Perfect. But what about a person that may be trying to get close to both of y'all? Like, say it's a guy that's like, oh, yeah, you know, let's do a record together, Queen. And you're like, of course, I love your music. And then they're like, oh, let me be cool with Clarence, too. And then next thing you know, he's like, by the way. Like, so how would you approach that situation when you have a business relationship? Because I know some people still be trying it. For a fact, they yes. do. <laughs> um, for a fact, they do. <laughs> it is just, oh, you just keep a business. You don't even, you don't even entertain it at all yeah you're like i thought we was cool yeah yeah you just keep it business i mean if you guys worked already and it happened but if it's happening before y'all even work then it's like we, we're not working because then you don't respect my relationship you don't respect if you don't respect my relationship you know you don't respect me mm, right That's in. So that makes me want to slide into our final question. We do this thing called a final question to undress every week where we find some of the craziest uh, trending topics on social media and we talk about them. So this final question comes from Reginald, um, Sheer Opulence 2. It says, women really just be letting us come in a life and get priority over everyone they've ever known in like three months laughing my blank off Ooh. having a boyfriend just genuinely makes you distant it's not personal or nothing i just rather be with my man so do you notice that like you start dating somebody or do you have friends when they get like a new man or a new girlfriend or something and they just completely change they don't answer the phone like the, the homegirl dates stop coming just everything has changed because they have someone new. is it me is this man right like do you agree with this um i've encountered that before i've actually been the person myself before and i can see like now like i can see how annoying it could be to a friend because then it's happened turn around and, and like happen to me a little bit um but i mean and and you really can't if somebody's in a honeymoon stage like you just can't charge it to the to to the heart or what you know because it's like I'm sure the person don't mean nothing by it. They just so caught up into who they in love with. They only want to talk to them. Like, but you shouldn't cut off all your friends because then if something happened, you ain't got nobody to talk to. You need your girls no matter. What. You need your girls, but but also your girls should respect you enough and you know to understand that mm -hmm. like anytime you need them, they should they should be there. Like you know even if you cancel a couple things because you want to be with your <laughs> I feel like a real friend, a true friend will be there regardless. You know what I'm saying? I would. As a yeah. Friend. I'm not going like, to not stop being my friend because she didn't hang out with me a couple of times. I mean, that's her man. My best friend we have, um, I'm not, it's not an issue, but I'm going to tell you what the problem is and y'all tell me. So uh -oh. my birthday falls on January the 13th and mm -hmm. her anniversary is January the 14th. Mm -hmm. Now, every year we travel together on my birthday or her birthday, whatever the case, right? Different things. Mm -hmm. Like, this is like my road dog. You know Jerry Eva. Yes, and, I do. Uh, <laughs> so it gets to the point where this past birthday, we were going to travel. 
And um, her boyfriend was a little bit mad at her because it was their anniversary. But she chose mm. my birthday. <laughs> she celebrated the anniversary after. Because she's like, you know, this is her birthday. Like, this is my best friend. Yeah. Like, what you want me to do? So um, in that case, um, I think it's about balance. And how I look at it is, well, this year you did my birthday with me. So next year, I understand if y'all go away, I'll go with my other friends and you just won't be included. But she's going to feel away too. So like, absolutely. That's, that's why it's a little difficult when it comes to sometimes you do have to choose and you do have to pick because there isn't uh, you know, a uh, alternate thing to do. We'll, we'll there the isn't, but I think maturity and like life happening helps you to make those smarter and better decisions. Like to your point, my best friend, she's passed on to Glory. Her birthday was on um, Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And so it's one of those where like, no one's trying to kick it on Valentine's Day for your friend's birthday because you're trying to kick it with your boo. Right. And for me, I was like, well, it's, Steph's birthday. So I would make my guy friend, whoever I was dating at the time, or if I was single, whatever, come and celebrate her birthday with me. Now she's gone on to glory. And I remember her birthday every Valentine's Day, as special as it is for love. I also remember her day. So once you get a little bit older and mature and life happens, the ups, the downs, the everything, I think you start making decisions that are not so for right now and for your, you know, your feelings right now and for the long run. So maybe you don't cancel your girl's dates because you don't need your girls. Like I got a pregnant, question. No though. one wants to kick it. Eva, yeah. I got a question for both of y'all. You're hanging off a cliff. You got your man and your best friend. You can only pick one up. Who's going down? Oh, hold on. Wait, what? You got to <laughs> drop one? Yeah, you, yeah, you got to drop one. Your husband or your, or your man? or your, your, your man or your best friend that you know forever? Who you dropping? You know, my husband is my best friend. Yeah, yes. Same. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm sorry. Like, your husband. <laughs> Say it, queen. Your husband comes first. If that's your husband, your husband comes first regardless. Mm. Always. Before any anyway. of that's, that's Bible. Your husband comes first. So, um. I mean that that's what it is. You gonna be in jail oh, and your husband gonna be single with someone else. <laughs> huh? I said you gonna be in jail and your husband gonna be single then moved on to somebody because you done killed somebody now. Well, you were supposed to just jump and just let y'all all die. Go to jail for <laughs> no, I'm gonna let you accidentally fall and find a <laughs> good legal defense, Sonny. Imagine trying to save both people and then you fall. That's me. That's something that's that's why you gotta put your thing do. on first. That mm-hmm. didn't help the infant. Yeah. What if you're not getting along well with your husband that week? Not y'all, but say it was this is just an instance and he cheated. You found out he cheated that week. I mean, you could just gotta think about it. You got kids with this person, this person gonna lose their dad. You know, it's it's beyond it's beyond mm. Like your kids, you got to think about your kids heartbreaking if they dad. I'm, I'm going super deep, but you <laughs> no, go deep. Like, is your friend gonna have more kids with you? Is your friend going to be there to hold you at night? Like, y'all just really got to think, you know, for yourself, your legacy, and your family. Right. And when it comes to not getting along or having the uh, tiff, that's going to happen in a relationship. I saw a post on Instagram that says, relationship goals are when you argue with your husband the night before, but it doesn't change communication tomorrow morning. Because you guys are going to disagree. You're not going to always see eye to eye. Right. But it's that commitment to each other that don't matter. It doesn't matter what happens. I got you. You got me. It's gang gang. That's all that really matters. It reminds me of Hate Our Love. There we go. Yes. Perfect. Yes. So it's not really seeing eye to eye. Exactly what you said. Well, you know what? If <laughs> you would like for us to undress your final question, just do us a favor. Follow us on Instagram at the Undressing Room Podcast and DM us like they do in L'Oreal's DM every single week. And boom, that's your opportunity for a chance to be featured. It's super easy. Perfect. And they yep. could definitely see you performing that this summer because you was talking about your summer set list and you wanted some of your fans to help you out with that. Uh, did you get that squared away yet? And are you going on? on a tour or are these like festivals? That's what I want to know. Where can I see you? These are spot shows. I do have actually two coming up at the end of March. And then I have one coming in, I think, May, July. So I have some spot dates. I've already done my tour. I need to focus on getting my sophomore album. Mm Because if I don't, I will never. I'll have y'all wait another two years. I don't want to do that. 
So where can we find you on um, social media to find out these spot dates just in case yes. we are in a town near you? Yes, Queen Queen Nigel. That's Queen Nigel. Q U E E N N A I J A on all platforms. And then I'll, I'll be posting like the, the flyers and stuff on my page or stories. So look at my stories and stuff. Thank you yes. so much. We know the single is doing amazingly. We wanted to continue to do so. And we can't wait to hear what you've been working on with Babyface Girl, because I love me some Babyface. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> I can't wait either. Yes, if you have not already heard it or gotten a single, make sure you go ahead and download that thing right now. It's called Hate Our Love by the one and only Queen Nija. Thank That's you for stopping right. by, sis. Thank you for getting undressed with us. For sure. You can put your clothes back on now. Okay. All right. <laughs> You're listening to the Undressing Room Podcast presented by Macy's. Log on to the undressingroompod.com for episodes and links to our personal Macy's shopping page. And we're going to get out of here. Thank y'all for tuning in with us. Yes. Thank you, Queen Naja. Now. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you, Queen, for coming by. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> What's wrong with you? The Undressing Room Podcast presented by Macy's is an Urban One Reach Media production hosted by the one, the only, Eva Marcel and L'Oreal. Executive produced by Kobe Cope Tyner. Associated producer Alexis Felder. Editing and production by Dunkus. Sales and corporate partnership, Josh Romani. Michelle Marino and Kadisha Campbell. Research, Lori Hall Flowers. Digital marketing, Sam Styers. J.R. Davis and Tim Hall. Digital creative, Alvin Francis. Content provided by MadamNoir.com, Bossom.com, and HipHopWire.com. Stay connected at TheUndressingRoomPod.com. See you at the next episode.